Okay, now let's get into the next level of settings. There's a lot of settings that are a part of this indicator. So let's go back into indicator settings. Now we do have alert features. I have everything set as false. Alert on the zero cross, alert on the signal cross, alerts on in general, true false, show alert message that would pop up on your screen. So we have all these options. If you want to utilize that, I have them out off for now. They're pretty straightforward. Now here is a key component of our system. We're going to help you identify when we do get a signal, when to actually get into the trade. Let's start with talking about five minute charts. The higher the time frame we go, we have to expand out these three settings. Right now, for a five minute chart, how many pips for delayed entry? The lowest I would ever go would be eight pips. The highest I would ever set this to is 12. And I'll explain what this does. Right now, I'll split the difference and I'll put a 10 in. Initial stop loss value is a 15. Initial take profit value is 30. So 15 pip stop loss, double that is initial take profit. So the minimum we recommend on trading the setup, as with pretty much any setup, is a two to one reward to risk. If I'm risking 15 pips, I better be at least going for 30 pips or my mathematics is off. That means, you know, if, I, if I'm if i going for 15 pips as a target and my risk is 15 pips, I have to have a really high win to loss ratio to do good. Most traders, even highly experienced traders that trade manual discretionary, and I know who are the top 1% PAM managers in the world I know how to go look at their data. Of those traders that trade manual discretionary, very few of them that are doing really, really good, you know, making seven, eight, nine, 10, 12% a month, I know who's good and who's not doing good for the current market conditions. A lot of these traders are in the high 50% to low 60% window loss ratios for their record, their track record, but they're trading setups two to one, three to one, four to one. So they do really well. So don't ever think that you have to come into the market and, and be right 75 or 80% of the time to make money. That's not the case. The mathematics shows you if you can be, you know, 58 to 63% and you're trading a minimum two to one reward to risk setup, you're in the ballpark of making money week after week. Start getting down around 53, 50%, you're going to be a break-even trader. That's fine. In the starting, in the beginning, it's about preserving capital and over time, gradually becoming more efficient and making money. In the beginning, getting into the, oh, I'm going to hit the ball out of the ballpark mentality or I'm always going to make the, the big shot, that, that's the wrong mentality. You have to lean on the mathematics. I'll give you a bit of advice. If you want to be a brilliant trader, whether you're trading CFDs, Forex, you know, stocks, options, futures, cryptos, the key is, is you have to build processes that lean on good mathematics. That's the bottom line. It's algorithmic trading, whether it's manual or automated, and you have to plan out, you know, what are the setups I'm going to trade? What time frames am I going to trade? What, what currency pairs am I going to trade? What is my objective on a per trade basis? Am I going for two to one? Am I going for three to one? In the beginning, you can have dumbed down objectives, stuff that's very easy to achieve. And as you gain experience, you can grow your goals, your objectives. So the, the idea in the very beginning, especially when you start using a new system, is don't trade live with real money. 
get used to all aspects of the system in demo mode, build up a track record in demo mode that you're measuring, you're documenting, you're logging. You know, every day, log all your entries, your exits, what happened on the trade. What I used to do back in the day when I would go trade manual discretionary, I would use Camtasia and I would screen capture my trading activities and go review it. And boy, if I ever wanted to make a YouTube uh, you know, comedy uh, channel, I could have <laughs> used my trading. I mean, there was some wild action in there as I was trying to figure out how to trade. And I wish somebody would have told me back 15 years ago, it's the process and your habits and the mathematics that make you a, a good trader, not being really good at figuring out which way the market's going to go. You know, ooh, the, the euro dollar is going to do this, or the, you know, pound dollar is going to do that, or the, you know, Swiss franc is going to, you know, it's not about that. It's about finding a system you feel comfortable with, getting an experience with it, measure, adjust, measure, adjust, measure, adjust. Measure what you're doing with the system, make adjustments to become more efficient or, or, or alter your time frame or the currency pairs you're on. Keep adjusting things till you get in a zone where you feel very comfortable and you're transitioning from being successful in demo mode, moving to trading live real money in a live mode. Now here's the bit of advice. I would highly suggest to go get Ray Dalio's book. He runs, he's, he's one of the top private hedge fund owners in the world, uh, based in the United States. Ray Dalio has a book out called Principles. Oh my gosh, is that book amazing. If you want to know how to structure your mindset and your activities to create the proper environment to build successful trading, that is, I don't like to use this term, but I'll use it. That is like, th that book is like the Bible of setting up the right algorithmic processes uh, in your trading and in your mentalities. Your, uh, you can get it on audiobook too. I think Amazon has it, uh, but it's in all the big bookstores. And Ray Dalio's been everywhere. He's been, you know, interviewed by uh, Tim Ferriss, and I think he's done interviews with Anthony Robbins and others. So, uh, Ray Dalio is very well known. Okay, I went off on a sidetrack there, but I wanted to make sure you understand, especially for you new traders, what you have to focus on. Because what you focus on is what you get in life, period. So, why not focus on the right mechanisms? to build a good foundation and then incrementally grow your capability from that as you gain uh, more and more experience. Now I'm going to cover just a few more items then we'll wrap up this video and we'll go on to run with this information and layer in additional information on top of it in the next video. But here's a good starting point. How many pips for delayed entry? 10. Initial stop loss value? 15 initial take profit value 30. Now, here is an important thing that I'm going to kind of go through a trade manually and show you what these components of the FX pulse or the strike trader lead pulse indicator is doing for you. Okay, I'm going to click OK here. So what's going to happen and I'll show you this in a forward video. Right now, I'm just going to do this manually. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to set this color to white. Or at least something. There we go. There's white. So we have a signal trigger line that just triggered here. Let's, let's blow up this view. Right now, at this bar close, the trigger line triggered. As you can see on the far right, the price is 1.17612. So we'll just call it 17, you know, 1.1761. 10 pips up from that. 
So back here again, we're, we'll call this the 6-1 level. 10 pips up from that would be your entry trigger line. So at the 7-1 level, they are close now. So our system will automatically, because we've set a gap of 10 pips. Wrong line. So we've set a gap from here to the candlestick close of 10 pips. This white line, as soon as this trigger line hits, this white line will get deployed. Now if we go into the indicator settings, I want to show you something because I need to correct something. The pending line is yellow, meaning until price reaches that line, the line is actually colored yellow or whatever you want to color it. Once price has lifted and hit that line, so it's yellow in the beginning, you'll have a horizontal yellow line. So in other words, when we get a signal, we don't just jump in and go, yeehaw, we're long. We make price confirm that it has enough momentum to fill our position. Eventually, price comes up, tags the yellow line, it turns to white. Now, from this point till price hit this line, what should we be doing? You can go into your MT4, right click, you can go into trading, and you could put a buy stop. So you can put a buy stop order in, in, the, in the market and lay it on that line. So in other words, we're going to let the market come up and hit our limit order to activate this trade. So right click, go into trading, buy stop, you know, whatever position size you typically trade, you want that set, you can set it up here in the window. So I would take this and I would lay that right on that line. So now I have a order, or you can put it just slightly above, you know, so you can see the line or just slightly, just somewhere so you can see that line. And it's all ready. You're, you're waiting for the market to prove that the momentum will follow through and fill your order. Once the order is filled, guess what? We have a stop set of 15 pips. We had set that down at 15 pips. And what color was that line, if you remember from the settings? We have a red. Let's go back into settings just for a second. We have a red and green. Green is our target line. Target is 30 pips out from our entry. Stop is 15 pips. So once we get filled, we would have a stop that would be down 15 pips. We would have a target line appear on our chart in green that would be set, and let's find green, at 30 pips. So I just wanted you to know that the second the trade gets triggered, we don't get into the trade there. We get a, a yellow line that says, hey, put your order here, a buy stop if you're going to buy, a sell stop if you're going to sell, and once you get filled, then we'll put where your stop and, and initial target should be. So we put those lines on the chart for you as a component of the system, and you can adjust the colors to meet your preference. So I just wanted to at least explain what those items are in the settings and what they control. So when we go back to the settings, that's what all of this information is. How thick do you want the line? Do you want it solid or dash? And what colors? The four lines you'll start seeing a lot on your charts when you're in the live market mode and you're watching price go up and down and you're getting you know, transitions from downside momentum to upside and upside to downside. You'll see all of that, these lines taking place. The nice thing is, as price goes up and hits your target, you'll see the stop line move. So your stop line will move 
per your setting. So if it hits your target, your stop is going to move up 15 pips, meaning the line. So it's what this is, all of this is a visual cues to help you know where should I get into this trade? Where, what's the minimum target I should go for? Where should I, my stop be? That way you don't have to think. The second we get a signal, you have all the lines displayed for you to help you manage where to put your uh, stops and targets. Now you can go in here, experienced traders that are, you know, you guys are familiar with what kind of risk management you like. You can go in here and set your initial stop and take profit visual reference lines, however you see fit. But I highly suggest never setting the, anything less than two to one, at least as a minimum benchmark reward or risk. And how many pips gap between the signal activating and where we should be willing to get in on a five minute chart, I would go no less than eight pips gap, no more than 12. Okay, so we pretty much went over the settings for the FX uh, pulse indicator. Now let's go in and throw in and kind of quickly cover adding the FX push to a chart for those of you that have access to the additional item. So let's go over here and add that indicator. So the Strike Trader Elite push, common, I'll check that. The Allow DLL Imports. This is one of those indicators where you just load it up, you adjust colors, and that's it. There's no settings. And this indicator measures trade intensity. This is a trade intensity indicator. Uh, this is what I, what I would call a more advanced indicator. It's very unique. We're looking at items like uptick, downtick information and uh, bar length and, and creating information. So let's say you're trading a move out of news or you want to fade an area or you want to join a trend. I mean, you can use this indicator to help you see when momentum is really coming into the market strong, either upside or downside momentum. And you can see when the momentum is starting to dissipate and we're potentially building a shift in intensity uh, to change directions. So that's how you load it up, real simple. I'll cover this in depth in the subsequent video. Right now, I just wanted to show you how easy it is to set. You just add it to a chart set the colors the way you like it and go from there. I will make this note though. I tend to use this indicator on lower time frames, like a five minute chart or a 15 minute chart, maybe even a minute chart. I like to use it when I'm watching news. So if I see a big pulse move and the market's pushing and pushing and pushing, I'm watching this to see how the intensity is dissipating. If I'm gonna go in there and fade a move or look for a rollover and maybe play this. You know, a lot of times news will hit, there'll be an initial reaction that might be up. And then the primary move will be the secondary one. Sometimes they play that game where they'll push price up literally so they can get in and sell it and take it down. So a lot of times I'll watch that initial move and I'll watch the momentum. If I see the momentum bleeding off, maybe into the first you know, 10 to 15 bars on a minute chart, or if I'm watching a five minute chart, you know, maybe first three, four or five bars, I might then get ready to, as I see that momentum dissipate and a shift to play the opposite direction and then engage the move on the downside on the opposite react reaction to the initial move. And then sometimes if it takes off and runs, I'll get in the move and I'll grow my position size into the run as I see strong intensity continuing. That's, it's a, it's a trade intensity indicator. Okay, so let's go in here. I'm going to delete these lines, get rid of these trend lines. There we go. 
So there you have it. You now have both indicators set. You have a basic chart built. The last thing I would do, I would right click. I would go into templates and put save template and give it a name. So in this case, you can just call it the We'll go STE for Strike Trader Elite underscore Pulse and hit save. Now, anytime I go open up a new chart, so let's go new chart. Let's say I'm going to make a US dollar Japanese yen chart. I can literally just open it up, set it to whatever time frame, right click, go into template. And there we go, STE Pulse, and boom, it will populate everything, and we're all set. Very simple. Another recommendation I have is once you, you build up a bunch of charts, definitely go into File, go into Profiles, and Save As, and give your MT4 platform, STE Pulse, give it a profile name or you know, whatever name you want. Just give it some sort of a name. I also personally, after I do all this, I go shut down and restart the platform just to make sure I latch everything that I just spent you know, 20 minutes building up. Now I know this video is a little bit long, but there was a lot of important settings and items to cover and some preliminary information I wanted to make sure you understand before we get into additional content. So there you have it. We have covered the installation of the indicators to your charts for the MT4 platform.